Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Dad Barrel stream on the Edinburgh Glasgow and the Cathcart Circle celebrating Burns Night and everything Scottish tonight. Starting in eight minutes' time. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the gap.
Passengers are reminded that smoking is prohibited at all stations and on all train services. This includes e-cigarettes. Good evening everybody and welcome to this Dad Rouse stream. We will be starting in around about two minutes. Please have your drinks and light refreshments ready. There is no trolley service during this stream, but first class is available from the membership panel. Starting in two minutes. is a safety announcement. It is not permitted to cycle, skateboard, or rollerblade within the station building. Good evening and welcome to this Dabra stream. It's Burns night, so of course it is a Scotland special. Edinburgh, Glasgow, and then on to the Cathcart for a little bit of a run on that. Now we were gonna do a custom-made scenario by Northern Princess Productions on the Five Circle line on Train Sim Classic today. That was the plan, but Train Sim Classic doesn't like me at the moment. It keeps breaking. Um, so we are gonna get back to doing some Train Sim Classic content very soon. Now I know somebody's gonna ask me, are we gonna be checking out the Engineering Express pack in this? Not specifically, no. I'm gonna do a separate video on that. However, I'm sure at some point we may pass some of the pretty coloured 66s on our way. So how are we doing tonight? Hannah Scott, hello, a train spotter from Berkshire, Pig and Bob. Artie, good to see you my friends. A random hips fan, typical name from Wayne Train Lover, Anakin Hung, officially Charles. Great to have so many of you in tonight. So, Hannah Scott has become a member, thank you very much Hannah. So, before we jump into the stream guys, and as always, I've got to tell you that all the views and opinions expressed within this stream are solely my own, may not refer those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with, and all of that good stuff. We will be absolutely be having locomotive location delivery, we will absolutely be having jumping in and out of the Discord, and we will absolutely be having tea and biscuits with the manager at some point tonight, I expect. Who knows? We'll, we'll try and avoid it, but you know how these things go. So, without further ado, let's press the button there, and we are here in Train Sim World. We're going to kick off on the Edinburgh-Glasgow route today. Um, we're going to do a wave lead down to Glasgow Queen Street. Quick walk through the city. We could simulate that on Google Street View, couldn't we? Um, then into Glasgow Central for a little run on the Cathcart Circle line. So, to the trains! Uh, choose a route. 
Dooby dooby doo. Edinburgh, Glasgow. There we go. Timetable mode. Uh, we're going to do it in the 385, then we'll take the 314 for a spin on Cathcart. Uh, we'll do a four car. And. Yeah, so this is about a 50 minute run, 58 minute. I think that should be um, pretty much all stations, that one. Edinburgh, Waverley to Glasgow, Queen Street, 759. Uh, that should just about be daylight there, I reckon, but we'll keep the dynamic weather turned on and press get started. Hannah Scott, no tea and biscuits, tea cake and, tea cake and iron brew. Is that the Scottish equivalent? I don't think I've ever had iron brew. Have you ever had iron brew, Danny? No. 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 I've, I've been on iron brew revolution at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. That's a cool roller coaster. <laughs> Blackpool Pleasure Beach seem to have a uh, uh, sponsor their roller coasters by drinks. Pepsi Max and Iron Brew. and Yeah. <laughs> ben P, hello. How are we doing? Okay, 1 Romeo, 2 1. Edinburgh Waverley to Glasgow, Queen Street. 0759 departure. Okay, so it's just about dawn, so that's pretty good. Uh, we will be calling at... Let's get you some game audio and let me know if you need that up or down. We are calling at... Haymarket, Linlithgow, Polmont, Falkirk, Croy, and Glasgow Queen Street. Let's get the class 385 set up. Uh, we need to get the safety systems turned on. I have not driven this train since we've done the children who need live streams. So, ah, there we go. Safety systems. Uh, TPWS cut in, DSD cut in, everything in, just as it should be. Nice one. TPWS and AWS operation. Does it not speak to me? It has TPWS Mark IV. I'm sure it's supposed to speak to me. Um, unless it wants me to do the TPWS temporary isolation switch as well as one of the safety systems. Um... Which normally wouldn't be required. Uh, there we go. Okay, let's try that again. No, it doesn't want to talk to me. I'm sure the 385 talks to you. Never mind, never mind. Okay, platform is on the left hand side. Let's get the doors open. And what else do we want to do? We want some lights. You can tell I'm all over the place today. Uh, headlights are currently set to full. GSMR doesn't work. Okay. Um, there we go. We do have working announcements though. We've, we've absolutely got a play of working announcements. Uh, just put my pin number in here. Normally, depending on your train operating company, you have your own individual number or some companies will get you to put your payroll number in. Um, uh, home, where are we? Auto announce menu. This is Edinburgh Waverley. I don't. Uh, this train is for. Hey, Cameron Glasgow Smith, welcome Queen to Denrail. New subscriber, great to have you here. Bright, lock doors. Green and a W. Yeah, um, Xerox love Xerox love Roblox 2023. The sounds on the 385 are not great. Yeah, I would completely agree with you there. It's certainly not the best sounds in game. So I know Rivet did do some tweaking to the sounds on this, and it is a little bit better now. Um, if you want the game volume up or down, guys, absolutely let me know, and we can do that. Hey, Tom Abbott, um, how did you find the 11am to 10pm shifts at the end? I've had a little bit of a result this week because two of them have been cancelled. Um, so I'm on de-icing trains and if the temperature is above a certain threshold, then inevitably the, the, the train gets cancelled. Uh, there's no point going out de-icing if there's no risk of ice. Um, so I've had a little bit of a result. I've had two cancelled shifts this week. Um, and, I mean, today is one of them, which is why I'm here streaming on Burns Night. So, uh, yeah, it, it's all good. We're gonna definitely going to take that. Uh, Blob, there's a very good sound mod on the TS community. I'll have to check that one out, Blob. I do have the signal mod installed on here. Um, 
Alright, yeah, I haven't got any of the sound mods. I, I will have to check that one out. Uh, Free 20 Sim Pilot Superfan, have you been driving in real life today? Uh, no. So, I did go to work today. I had to go to a customer site and do uh, an induction. Um, because where we go to, to different customer sites, we're on site as a contractor, uh, so we're required to know about the customer sites, their fire procedures, health and safety procedures, and that sort of thing. So quite often when we go to new sites, we have to do a, an induction at that site. So that is what I've been doing today. Um, 20 mile an hour feels very slow. There we go, it's gone up to 50. We are 0.7 miles away from Haymarket. So we should do our next station is announcement, if we can find it. Um, next station is Haymarket. Hey, there we go. And we are a four car, I believe. We'll double check that on the outside. The Formula, Formula One Nerd, is this your first stream since New Year's? I think this is either the second or the third one, because we did have a stream earlier on in the week. Uh, yeah, Chris Chilly Hill, this is Train Sim World 4. And we are looking for the four car stop marker. If there is a four car stop marker, anything's possible. Hey, there is, we have stop car markers. Although the stop car marker doesn't seem to marry up with the uh, distance monitor there. Unless I've got... Have I got eight on? Okay, we need to double check that. That's that's not right. Oh, okay. So, no, we, we're not a four car. Um, so, we might be an eight car. One, two, three, four. So we are an eight car. Um, so, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> although saying that, we don't have any eight car stop markers. There you go. There's there's lesson number one today. Oh, we've got an S car mark. Okay. Well, the front of my train is on the S car mark, and my rear set of doors are hanging off the end of the platform. So that definitely uh, that definitely gets one of those. Positioning of the stop car marker not good. Uh, yeah, Chris Chilly, if you opt for the minimal HUD, um, I do believe you can change it. Right, we are off to Linlithgow. I forgot to do my announcements. Um, this is P Market. This train is for Glasgow Queen Street. Off we go, we got a green. Three twenty sim pilot. I am brewing a deep fried Mars bar. It's got to be a haggis. It's Burns night. Surely it's got to be haggis. Yes. Yeah, so the original plan was we were going to be swinging a right here and going around the uh, five circle, but unfortunately, due to the wonders of train sim, that's not happening now. Uh, Lynn Lithgow. It's a silent W, like Glasgow. Ah, okay. Thank you very much, Random Hips Man. So I did actually make a route learning video on this route when it first came out, but I haven't driven this route since then, so all of my braking points are completely up in the air. I can't remember where any of them are, so <laughs> we're just going to have to wing this, but we do that on most streams anyway, and it normally works out okay. Shut off through the neutral section, and we're powering back up. Okay, we will be going through uh, Edinburgh Parkway in a minute. We might see the tram if we're lucky. Daniel de Blocks Gamer, Haggis and Sing Song of Old Lang Syne. No. We're not singing. 
I'm afraid my knowledge of Scottish music extends to the Proclaimers. Um, I do like the Proclaimers though, and not just the song you're thinking of. I think Letter to America is my favourite. Right, so we are good for 100 miles an hour, uh, which it gets up to pretty quickly. I've not been on one of these in real life. They're, they're quite funky, aren't they, with the kind of, sort of curved windscreen. Well, they did have a curved windscreen. They, I don't think they have any more. They have problems with visibility out there. Yeah. Wayne Train Lover, you should do London to Edinburgh on Train Sim Classic. Oh, do you know what? We are going to be doing a charity event later on in the year, Children in Need, uh, similar to what we've done this year. Um, so doing a long distance like London to Edinburgh on Train Sim Classic, or London to Aberdeen or something like that, um, I mean, we could even do like Penzance, Penzance to Newcastle, the longest train journey. Northern Princess Productions is serious scenario making for you there. Right, Edinburgh Park. Are we going to see the tram to our left? No trams. We like trams. We should do another tram sim stream. That was good fun when we done that. We should, we should definitely think about doing that again. Okay then, so 106 of you lovely people watching, I think it is time for our first round of our very popular game, Locomotive Location Livery. Post your numbers now for Locomotive Livery Location. So if you haven't seen this game before, guys, post your numbers in the chat between 1 and 25. I will pick the third number that comes up on my screen and we will play. You'll soon get the hang of it. should do the Night Riviera from London to Cornwall. I would love to do that in real life. I've never done any of the sleeper trains. Um, the Cali sleeper or the Night Riviera. I would love to have a ride on either one of those. What do you reckon, Danny? Should, should we go for a ride on the sleeper train to Scotland? Yes. Yes. Should we do it? Yeah. Yeah, not, not in train sim, in real life. Yeah. <laughs> That's this year's holiday sorted. Uh, GJ Barnard. Game 15 and gain volume down a little bit. Absolutely, we can do that. Yeah, this train does have a rather annoying sound loop on it, so I, I completely get why you'd say the game audio is a bit loud. Um, let me know what you think of it now. Okay, so third number on my screen is Leo Lowe, who is a first class member, but you are the third number on my screen with number 13. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. So here's how this works, guys. I am going to give you box number 13, which is dead centre on the screen. You've got 10 seconds to give me the locomotive. It could be a multiple unit, but it doesn't rhyme, does it? Locomotive livery and location of what you think you see underneath. Today's picture sent in by W4LT. No train in that one, but can you get the location from that little snippet? There is one of these for absolutely everybody out there. Artie, I'd also love to do a sleeper train. Uh, Paul Gray, Night Riviera is excellent. Cali Sleeper is overpriced and not as good. Um, I get a bit of a discount on the Cali Sleeper, so f for me it's, uh, <laughs> it's not too bad. We've got an 80 coming up. Wookie 390 is taking a guess. 66 at Skegness. W4LT, that, um. I think that now excludes you from guessing because it's your picture. I was saying the other day about the lighting in this game. Sometimes the lighting like now looks absolutely stunning and other times it's just all over the place. But yeah, the kind of sunrise sunset scenes are, are really quite nice. Uh, David A, I don't have Train Sim Classic. What's the difference between Train Sim 4 and Train Sim Classic? Train Sim Classic is we're still 80, I thought we were going up to 90. There we go, a little bit of speeding. Um, Train Sim Classic is essentially an older version of Train Sim World. It's a, it's a completely different game um, and a completely different game engine. So 
the advantage that Train Sim Classic has got is that it's got far more routes uh, and far more trains for it because it's been out for a lot longer. Um, the graphics on it, some would say, uh, are not as good. Um, personally, I, if you've got quite a few add-ons for it, you can get it looking really nice. But Train Sim World does, I, I think it's fair to say, the graphics on Train Sim World are better um, because it's a newer game. But Train Sim Classic definitely has uh, a lot more content. And some of the trains that come out for Train Sim Classic are superb. They, you know, the re level of realism that's been achieved with some of the add-ons is, is absolutely first class. So, uh, yeah, and uh, Train Sim Classic isn't available for console. That's PC only. Uh, typical Nathan trains, I think Rivet needs to add the correct motor sounds because it still feels unrealistic. Uh, Anakin Hung, do you still need to report to Signal if you have a near miss on near miss on SPAD? The signal clears seconds before you pass it at high speed. Uh, I don't believe you would need to report it. I I mean, technically, it's not an operational incident. It's certainly a near miss, but it's not an operational incident. If if that's happened, the chances are, though, the TPWS on the approach to the signal would have taken you out. Um, it would certainly be a change your pants and learn from your mistakes and make sure whatever you whatever distracted you and whatever the reason was, make sure it certainly doesn't happen again. Uh, David A. No, Train Sim Classic doesn't have a timetable mode. Uh, so essentially you have the, the quick drive mode where you can choose what train you want on what route, your start point and your end point. A little bit similar to how free roam works in, in Train Sim Classic, um, in Train Sim World, sorry. Or you've got like such scenarios you can drive in there. Um, why does it want me to slow down? The red react icons come up. But We've got no speed limits coming up. The station is still four miles away. Don't don't know what it's talking about there. Um, I also need to accelerate. We're going too slow. Uh, yeah, Train Sim Classic also is an open world, so you can't get out the train and look around. You are stuck in in the train. I mean, you can you can you've got like external cameras, but you can't physically get out and walk around. Hey, Ko, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Uh, Aston Martin fan, I think the 385 is one of the nicest looking trains, does anyone else agree? Not bad, not bad. Uh, someone was asking why you've only got such a little window to look out of. Uh, the reason is on the class 385 and uh, Electrostar series and, and many other trains and units like that, uh, you're able to couple them together in multiple and you can walk through. So this, this bit here becomes part of the corridor. Um, I don't know if we can, yeah, there we go. We, we can kind of open this door and we can close that door and sort of convert the cab into a walkthrough corridor. So that's why you've only got the little bit of a window on one side. Having driven um, Electrostars for quite a big chunk of my railway career, you do lose probably 20 foot of visibility on the offside. So when you're coming into, into stations where the platform's on the offside, um, judging your stopping distance can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, but you get used to it. You get used to it. I remember going from driving driving uh, Electrostars, which has got this set up, to driving 66s with a massive panoramic window, and it's it's it's, it's so nice to have all that all that uh, visibility at the front of the train. Yeah, 320 sim pilot super fan. It doesn't really affect the safe running of the train. The driver can see everything they need to see, um, so there's no reason not not having it really. Hey, Joe, the British Ace, how are we doing? Great to have you here. Good to see you the other day, bud. I hope everything's going alright for you. And the fog comes in. And we better get some braking, otherwise we're going to have a station overrun. Using a lot of brake force there. In an ideal world, you don't want to be using any more than brake step 2, which is about 60%. If you need more than that, absolutely use it, but uh, yeah, with sort of general good practice train driving is to use no more than about 60% brake. And we are an 8 car for the 8. We should say, we should be doing... We'll soon arrive at Linlithgow. 
Okay, it's telling me I'm going like miles past my stop. Okay, the, the stop car marks on this route are seriously, seriously broken. As is the braking performance at low speed, apparently. Um, so it's telling me we've gone 108 yards past our stopping point. But if I go into external view, I wouldn't mind betting the back of the train is only just on the platform. Yeah, so if I've gone 108 yards past my stopping point, if I'd stopped where it wanted me to stop, the back of the train would have been hanging off the platform. Um, body side indicator lights not working. Uh, have I got to? I don't think I've turned the interior lights on. Uh, oh, there is. Absolutely no ambient sound at all. It's silent. I thought this route had had an update and all these issues had been fixed. Um, yeah, uh, clearly not. That's uh, uh, disappointing, but not entirely, un not entirely unexpected. Um, okay, so we want to do. Uh, this train is for Glasgow Queen Street. Right, we are off to Polmont in 4.6 miles. Uh, another pointless account. Did you ever like giving live PA announcements in real life? Yeah, absolutely. I, I used to like doing PA announcements. Um, honesty is the best policy. <laughs> I used to say, um, yeah. Some of my announcements was maybe slightly controversial, but honesty is the best policy, and honesty was one of our company values, so I, I fully supported honesty. It was just when I made the announcement saying the train had been delayed due to a staff management error. That got me into a little bit of trouble. But hey-ho. <laughs> Stu, good evening. How are we doing? Interior lighting's in the TMS. Right, we've got 4.1 miles. Let's see if we can find that in there. Um, home. Uh, saloon lighting on. There we go. Okay. Well, well, at least we got part of it working. Uh, auto announce. There we go. So, customer info. I'm pressing the next station button. I give up. I give up. <laughs> yeah, I, I am definitely a fan. Someone was saying about the fog. I'm definitely a fan of the volumetric fog effects uh, in game. If you've got really good route knowledge, driving in the fog is is satisfying. Especially when you can drive with zero visibility and still run the train to time, because your route knowledge is such that you know exactly where your braking points are. You know exactly what you're looking out for. Um, it, it's yeah, it's definitely a sense of achievement and accomplishment. Good test of your route knowledge as well. Hey, Wayne Train Lover. Yeah, absolutely. We are going to be doing a community meetup. We're going to try for the National Railway Museum um, in York. Probably somewhere around Easter time. But um, watch this space for more information. Yeah, typical Nathan. I, I thought the announcements had been fixed. I thought they were all good and working and doing what they should be doing. But yeah, obviously not, unfortunately. Uh, 1.3 miles out. Let's give it a little bit of break at this point, I reckon. And while the speed's coming down, we can have a little play with the announcements. So where's the shortly be arriving at? There we go. Yeah, free twenty sim pilot super fan. I was under the impression that a lot of these issues had been fixed. I'm not kind of sure what's going on and why they haven't. Um, I'm on the most up to date version of the game, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm generally quite miffed and unsure as to exactly what's going on with it. But yeah, I'd, I'd agree. 
Uh, what are we doing? Let's get a little bit more break in there. We'll soon arrive at Holland. No station lights on as well. And we're an eight car train looking for the eight car mark. So I'm just watching my countdown again to see if we've got, um, see whether this is going to register right. Looks like we're going all the way down to the end of the platform anyhow here. And then as soon as the train stops, all the sound is gone. Oh dear, oh dear. This is Holmont. This train is for Glasgow Queen Street. The next station is Falkirk High. Falkirk High. Loading passengers. We are running bang on time as well, which is good. We will absolutely take that. Wait until 0825. So while we're waiting, let's get those numbers posted. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Yeah, Matty PK, I was considering buying this route in the last sale. I'm glad I didn't. Very disappointing quality. The actual graphics in this route are quite nice. It is a nice scenic route. Um, and like I say, I was under the impression that most of these problems had been fixed. Yeah, and I, I, I can't defend the indefendable um, at this point. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. Mammoth Motto UK, welcome to Deborah. Hello, great to have you here. Um... Ease off your brakes just before you stop. Absolutely. You should always try and stop on a rising brake. If you've got decent route knowledge and you know your braking points, then it's far easier to do that. Um, I am purely just winging it at the moment. So what are we reckoning? 320 Sim Pilot Superfan, you are the third number on my screen with number 12. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Here we go, guys. Box number 12. 10 seconds for that Locomotive Livery Location, if you can, please. We've got more canopy. There is a train in there, I promise. Where could it be? Let me know your thoughts. Monty Burns Gaming, hello, how are we doing? We are off to Falkirk High in three miles. Uh, Daniel to Block's game has gone London St Pancras. Cross train spotting has gone slow. Monty Burns Gaming is the train with a tiny window. Probably my least favourite train in the game, to be honest. I like the the only saving grace on this train is the announcements. I think because I don't think the sounds are great. The actual cab modelling and the tiny window, I, I can't blame the devs for that because that is how this train is in real life. Um, so that would be really unfair of me to put that on the devs. Um, but yeah, I think that the only kind of saving grace this has got is the funky announcement system. Uh, 320 sim pilot super heads up speed display on class 800. Does the class 800 have a heads up speed display in real life? That that is pretty cool. I've never had the pleasure of going in the cab of a, an 800, but if it has, that that is pretty cool. Rick Ashtray, who has one of the greatest usernames on YouTube. Good evening, my fellow Hastings citizen. That picture at Stratford International? No. Uh, KO's asking about the horn. I've never been on one of these, so I couldn't tell you if that's realistic or not. Start getting some braking for full Kirk High. We'll soon arrive at Full Kirk High. Uh, typical name from Richard. I hope in the future Rivet could add all of the branch lines that run on this line. They should add. Uh, Annisland branch with a 158 or 170 Dunblane line with 385 and a lower branch. 
and I've probably pronounced all of those completely wrong, so I do apologise. Random Hips fan, it's realistic, hooray! <laughs> we, we've got something decent. Uh, but then, typical Nathan Train says the 385 horn sounds nothing like that. And we are running on time as well, which I'm told that's not very realistic for a Scott Rail service. All views and opinions are my own, of course. Right, coming into Falkirk, we are 8 for the 8. Let's see how it's going to have us this time. Yeah, it looks like it is going to put us all the way at the end of the platform. The low speed... Oh. The first set of doors are on the platform, so it's not tea and biscuits for the manager. The low speed braking performance on this thing just doesn't seem right. The speed seems to come in quite nicely. And what you can have on a lot of multiple units is you can have what they call brake fade. So... Uh, at higher speeds, your brakes are working. You're using your dynamic brake, your rear static brake, your regenerative brake, which is where the, the motors are turned into generators and ge they generate resistance, um, which slows the train down. Pretty it's similar to changing down gears in your car. Um, and when the train speed gets lower, that becomes quite inefficient, so the air brakes kick in. So sometimes you can get something called brake fade, where you get a transition between the electronic braking and the air braking. So there can be a little bit of kind of where it crosses over it can be a little bit funky it's it's supposed to be seamless you're not supposed to be able to notice it um but on this train here on this particular unit here the brake fade seems absolutely terrible and i don't know if that's prototypical whether that's just in game but when you get down below sort of 15 10 miles an hour the brakes just seem to disappear it's like they don't exist um nick k worst horn in the game is the 66 it sounds like a mini <laughs> oh we didn't do any announcements this is Falkirk High. Welcome to the Scotrail service to Glasgow Queen Street. The next station is Troy. I wish you could kind of queue these up. Um, she could sort of press them in order. She didn't have to keep pressing announce. It done it automatically. That'd be pretty cool. Um, another point in this account is the 800 layered into Edinburgh. Do you know what? I didn't see any when we left. 320 Sim Pilot Superfan, 20, 20,233 subspecial Mum Rail tries driving the train. <laughs> what do you reckon? We have done that before, haven't we? It didn't end well, did it? That should be, Mum Rail, Mum Rail Drives, that should be a, a membership special. Uh, Artie backing me up there on the GA720s. As soon as you hit about six miles an hour, the braking power suddenly goes through the roof and you chalk massively. It was horrible trying to negate that. Uh, Monty Burns Gaming, it's like the opposite of a tread brake unit where the brakes are bad at high speed but very sharp below 20 mile an hour. Anakin Hunt, can you make custom routes on Train Sim World 4? In theory, yes. There is there is a public editor. Um, but I haven't actually seen anyone publish any work yet. I'm, I'm not particularly tied in well with the community, so it, it could be that I'm just a little bit out of the loop. Um, but yes, in theory, you can. Free 20 Sim Pilot Superfan. I, I feel that if I read that out, I'm just kind of um, reinforcing your comment. <laughs> Uh, it's 100, we are speeding, let's get a little bit of break in there. Um, Daniel de Blocks Gamer, they need to have it so they use Fletcher Mathers and the announcements be GPS. Yes, so the, the new line the new line by River Games, the Benina or Benina line, does have automatic announcements on it and I am definitely a big fan of them. Um, I haven't played the, the, the route on the channel, but although it's very pretty, it's just quite... It, it's slow. There's just kind of not really enough going on for my liking. Um, so that's why I haven't done it on the channel. But I do like the auto announcements on that. They are very good. 
Uh, Wayne Train Lover, nothing is planned yet. All I can say is watch this space or the Discord server. Invitation link in the description below. And I will publish that in due course. Whilst we are talking about Discord, why don't we jump over there and have a look and see what you lovely people have been posting. We're in the live stream pictures page. Emily has proper traction. Uh, I am not going to disagree with you, Emily. That is a beast of a locomotive. Absolute beast. Uh, we definitely need to jump into... Train Sim Classic and have a little drive on that on the East Coast Main Line. Absolute beast of a locomotive. And if you want to post any pictures, live stream pictures page over on our Discord server. And like I said, you will find an invitation link for that in the description below. So we've got 5.7 miles to Croy. We are on the level. Cross train spotting. Dad Rail, what trains do you want to see the most in a train sim world? I think we've got a pretty good selection. I would like to see more of the Sprinter family. I would like to see a 156. Um, I think that would be a really nice addition. I would also like to see a Voyager. I think a Voyager is one of those trains that you could layer onto quite a few routes. Um, the 158 we've got, that that's quite versatile. Um, yeah, I'd like to see maybe more locomotive stuff. It'd be quite nice to have um, a 68, something like that. Sort of a modern locomotive would be pretty cool, or a 70. Um, yeah, pass passenger-wise, I think a Voyager. And probably um, freight-wise, a 68. KO, you can't be beat a class 90. Arty, another point is my only experience of World of Subways is one YouTube video and it did seem very competent from what I saw. The person playing it however was not. So I've got World of Subways and I, I paid good money for it and I've never streamed it because I find the controls on it really, really difficult to negotiate and it just, I, I've really struggled to get on with the game. Um, the kind of click points and the way you move around and stuff like that is just not very intuitive. RTI, I'm looking forward to seeing the Aventura modelled on the London Overground, a train I've actually driven in real life, so should be decent at it. Uh, you're, you're definitely invited to come onto the channel. Right, 2.7 miles to Croy Platform 2. Let's keep that power in a little bit longer. Uh, we're on a slight uphill gradient as well. Okay, I had a buffet at Cosmos Newcastle and it is delicious. We had a restaurant called Cosmos in Hastings and there was one in Eastbourne, wasn't there? And we ate there quite a few times, but they both closed down. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why. There was rumours about... I don't want to put you off going back. There was, there was, there was rumours involving health inspectors. Um, but we ate there quite a few times and it was, it was really nice. It was a, it was like an Oriental Buffy. I don't know if it's kind of the same way you are, but yeah, it was, it was nice. Right, let's get some braking for Croy. We are 1.4 miles out. Um, what train number do I have at the moment? Should be written up here somewhere. Uh, Three eight five one zero four. Let's get a little bit more brake going in there. <laughs> Fantastic arty. I look forward to proving that I made the right decision not to be a driver anymore. Well, it looks like we have a little bit of precipitation going on. I was hoping we might pass some of the, um, the kind of engineering express stuff some of the 66s, but uh, we haven't seen any yet. There's still time. Typical Nathan's, I desperately want turbo stars on Train Sim World 4. Yeah, I, I would love to see, and I, I don't think we're going to. Is that the station there, or crikey? We're supposed to stop here. Yeah, that'll stop. We'll soon arrive at Troy. 
Loads of them. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's even on the cards, but I'd love to see the East Coast way extended through. Ah, uh, yeah, talk about... Yeah, sorry people, we need to get out and see this. Oh, well that was bad camera work, wasn't it? Um... <laughs> this, this is not meant to happen. We want to chase down the Engineering Express Pack 1 Livery Class 66 that does have the wrong type of buffer on it. Uh, coupler. There we go. Did we stop on the platform? We did stop on the platform. Uh, loading passengers. Cross train spotting. Didn't the 385s have a design flaw where you could see duplicate signals? Yeah, originally, if memory serves me correctly, the windscreens on the 385 were curved. They kind of had like a fishbowl effect on them. And at certain times you were getting glare through there. And because of the con concave... Concave, convex, concave. I think because of the curve on the on the screen, um, it was causing funny things to happen to the signals. Uh, we are running early, but with that station stop, it's hardly surprising. Um, this is Troy. This train is for Glasgow Queen Street. Let's play some play with some announcements. For your safety and comfort, smoking is prohibited at all stations and on all train services. This includes e-cigarettes. Do a wheel spin out the station, says Gallant Pioneer. This might have some form of low adhesion simulated, but I would doubt it. Yeah, for all its faults, though, it's it, the train is modelled. The, the train looks nice. Um, and the route does look nice, which, I, which I've always said. Um, I, you know, I will be quite fair with my feedback, and I'll, I'll be critical as well where needed. But it's also, you know, you need to point out the good things. And this, this is one of those routes. It does look very nice, and the train does look very nice. So in, t in terms of artwork, Rivet do tend to generally do a good job. Yeah, Londo Spark, why is the 385 being towed with the pantograph up? Um, okay, so I am not gonna... I am gonna do a video on the Engineering Express Pack. There is a lot wrong with that pack. There are so many things that are not right about it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold my thoughts on that for now. Hannah Scott says, see it, say it, sort it. If you see something that doesn't look right, report it to a member of staff or text the British Transport Police on 61016. See it, say it. Sorted. We do have our one on the train as well. See it, say it, sort it. And we're up at a hundred and coasting. Shall we have a locomotive location livery? Go on then. Go on, why not? Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Uh, random hips fan, I'm unable to become a member because the button isn't showing. That's interesting. Uh, is it showing for anybody else? So, I'd like to call Dovetail Games and Rivet a something I'm going to say here, not. <laughs> what are we reckoning? Um, Xerox Roblox 2023 says number 12. We've already had number 12, so I'm going to go with um, the one before you, which is Pig and Bob number 8, on the basis that number 12 has already been called. So let's go with number 8. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Okay, guys, number eight. Ten seconds if you can for that Locomotive Livery Location. There is definitely a train in that picture somewhere. I, I promise you there is a picture of, that, of a train in that picture somewhere. I think once you reveal the, uh, I think once you reveal the train, you'll get it pretty quickly. Yeah. 
yeah, Random Hips fan points out we had a new member at the start of the stream. Um, it was Hannah Scott became a member at the beginning of the stream. Hey, Craig Paul has become a member. Welcome. Thank you very much, Craig. Much appreciated. So as I, I, I've spoke vaguely about previously, and there will be a, a proper video coming, we are going to be doing a lot more model railway stuff on the channel, thanks to the fact that I will soon be building a model railway. Isn't that right, Monrail? She's really, really excited for it, aren't you? Absolutely she is. Um, I've, I've got a Cavalax Class 56 Colas coming uh, hopefully this week, which will be quite nice. So hopefully I'm going to be able to start doing a few review videos uh, of Model Railway Bits and Bobs and kind of document the building of the Model Railway. So the, the Dad Rail channel originally was a channel for me to document the Model Railway I was building with my children. So finally after... What's the year? Eight years of this channel being live? Uh, we're actually going to use it for what it was intended to. So the train sim content is not going to stop. That is going to carry on. Um, hey, Rick Ashtray has become a member. Hi, Rick. Rick Ashtray, he's never going to give you up. He's never going to let you down. He's never going to run around and hurt you. You've been Rickrolled. I love my soundboard. Move the mouse cursor out of the way. I am very guilty of that. Uh, I believe there is an option in Streamlabs to disable capturing of the mouse cursor. Nick K, who is the voice on locomotive location delivery? That is a chap called... I am going to have to look that up for you. Uh, it's a chap that is on Fiverr and I can't remember his name and he's a really great guy he's done quite a few things for the channel and he's done all of the children in need ones as well um, which was fantastic and the fact I can't remember his name is really bugging me now Craig Craig Kenny I think his name is um, drop me a message on Discord or my socials um, if you want his contact details I'll be happy to pass them on to you Hannah Scott you know the rules, and so do I. Two yellows, and the speed limit's dropped to 85. And that's one yellow, so we're going to get a little bit more break in. And this is where we do our commentary singing. So commentary driving is a thing, it's say what you say, we do commentary singing. Just one yellow, red is ahead, green would be better, dooby dooby doo. Hey, we did have 120 viewers just a minute ago, what happened? We have a what's known as a running dummy or a running ground position light signal, although it was up in the air, uh, which was the shunt signal on the left. All the time we're running under main aspect signals, which we are at the moment. Um, any shunt signals on that route will automatically be cleared for the movement of the train. And we've got red ahead and we're still going quite fast. Hopefully the TPWS isn't going to take me out. And we want to be doing no more than 20 at the AWS magnet, subject to your individual company's operating instructions. My company that I work for at the moment is 10, some companies are 15. Um, but we'll, we'll go for 20. When I, worked for, when I worked for the Team Blue, it was 20, so. And you want to aim to stop around about a coach length away from the signal. However, you do want to also ensure especially during darkness that you can see the signal number so we can see there we've got um, looks like Charlie Charlie 5 1 signal so all signals are um, all signals are set using phonetics and DRA and we're into neutral so the train is secure yeah so that's Charlie Charlie 5 1 we've got Charlie Charlie 237 that would never be Charlie Charlie 51 or Charlie Charlie 237 it's always said as individual numerals uh, individual alphanumerics, so Charlie Charlie 5 1 signal. So, if the signal to call us up, that would be Charlie Charlie 5 1. So, this is the driver of 
Uh, one Romeo, two one at a stand at Charlie Charlie five one signal over. Yes, hello driver. Sorry to detain you at that signal. I've got a lot of traffic ahead of you. Uh, you'll be there for a few minutes. Just wait for a change of aspect on Charlie Charlie five one. Okay, signal. Thank you very much uh, for letting me know. I shall wait for change on Charlie Charlie five one. Driver out. Safety critical comms. Just like that. Uh, so while we're waiting, we can have a quick look at these signals as well. I, uh, train driver rules videos are something that we I've tried before and wasn't happy with and will go back to at some point. Watch this space. Um, so we've got route indicators um, on the top of this signal which indicate what route we're going to take. So these are sometimes called feathers or lunars uh, or flashes depending on what part of the world you're in. But these are route indicators. So, and the, these are numbered as such. So, route indicators to the right would be positions four, five, and six. Route indicators to the left are positions one, two, and three. So, on this signal, we've got a position one, a position two, a position three, and a position four route indicator. This signal over here, we've just got a position one, two, and three. And it'll be up to the driver as part of your route knowledge to know what route each one of these indicators is going to take you over. It is possible the signal can pull off a wrong route for you. Um, so you could pull position four off, could, which could be wrong for our train, and that will be part of your route knowledge um, to know that that is something you are you are going to be required to know. Yeah, and then we can see on the yeah the signal next to it there, Charlie Charlie two three five. We've got what's known as a theatre box. Moving target. Welcome to Deborah. New subscriber. Great to have you here. Um, yeah, this is this is known as a theatre box, or um, I, I think they've got new names now. I don't think they call them theatre boxes. I think they call them um, Mari, no, Sari, standard alpha numeric route indicator, or something like that. I think they've got a new fancy term for them. But when I learnt them, they were called theatre boxes. And this is exactly the same principle as a route indicator, but this can show obviously more than six indications. So you'll get a platform number, or you'll get a line number, or you might get a U or a D or an S or an F. Or sometimes you can get multiple things together. You can get a UD or a so, um, uh, sorry um, US up slow DF down fast. Um, you might get an X for a reversible. Every signal sing every. Sig, sig, every single signal, try saying that when you've had two brandies, um, every single signal um, has its own route indication. So every, every every signal that has a route indicator will have its own kind of um, set of routes that it's capable of displaying. It, displaying. So uh, there, there kind of isn't a, isn't a standard. I mean, up and down, fast and slow are pretty standard, but every signal will be capable of, of displaying something different. Um, Denied. Wait for signal to change. We're not due until 57. It's only 1.9 miles, so I'm going to hazard a guess that um, we've just got to sit here and wait for a minute. We can also look at... So... Here we go. This is known as a ground position light signal, or GPL. And effectively, this is, this is a signal. This is just a shunt signal. So what we've got here with the two red lights is stop. Um, this signal would also be capable of showing a two white lights at a 45 degree angle. Sometimes these signals will show a red, if it's an older signal, it will show a red and a white at 45 degrees. Um, but normally it's a white and a white at 45 degrees. If that signal clears, uh, effectively as the driver, that means proceed as far as the line is clear, being prepared, obeying all other signals and being prepared to stop short of any obstructions. Um, yeah, and you normally find those on the exits to yards and sidings. Um, sometimes you'll find them underneath a main aspect signal. So we've got these signals here. You might find one of them underneath this signal here um, on approach to like a terminal platform. So if there's a train already in the platform, you'd have the subsidiary signal, which would authorise you into the platform known as permissive working. And I am literally just rabbiting now. So I'm, just, I, 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 I'm filling time, filling time. Um, uh, up. UD up down. That sounds like an interesting line to take. Yeah, that that'd probably be known as a reversible Londo Spark. Um, X Lover Robots 2023 AWS is called a AWS Sunflower in the cab. You are correct. Yeah, this is known as the Sunflower display. So sometimes these are mechanical. Sometimes on modern units, these are now on the DMI screen, uh, driver machine interface computer screen. You'll have the indicator on it. Or sometimes these are LED, LED as well. Hey, Dilly Gaff TM, welcome to Dadra. Dilly Gaff, um, is there a reference there to Kevin Wilson by any chance? If you are under the age of 18, I do not recommend you check out Kevin Wilson's content. 
if you are over the age of 18, why haven't you checked it out? It's fantastic. Right, we've got a green. We've got the position four route indicator. And if you put the train into forward, it goes a little bit better. We are off. Uh, moving target. No, it's not a mini dartboard. <laughs> you get those darts with the little suction cups on them and just throw them at it. So because we got the position four route indicator, I'm assuming we're going to take the line going off to our right hand side there. What you can also see down on the right hand side is we've got a shunt signal. But because the last signal was a main aspect, we, we the last signal we passed was uh, a green, a main aspect signal, that will always be cleared for our movement. Um, so if that was set to red and we went past it, it would be a spad, however it wouldn't be our fault. Right, we are good for 40. Line speed is dropping down to 30 in a few minutes. And we are on our final approach into Glasgow, Queen Street. So let's play an announcement. Playing darts on the AWS, how funny. Londo Spark, now I'm humming a certain song. That's far enough. That's that's We're supposed to be doing 50, look, I, I am well and truly speeding here. And we're going down towards a 30, so let's let's get some proper break in here. Could you please play Mind the Step between the platform and the train announcement? Uh, we're running under cautionary signals, so... That was, we're down to 20. That was two yellows. Was that two yellows or one yellow we've just gone past? I'm, I'm guessing it must have been one yellow. I'm not paying attention, I'm afraid. I'm uh, too busy reading the chat. Typical name for trains, I don't like that noise when you apply it and release the brakes. I don't think that happens in the real 385. Yeah, it does, it does sound a bit weird. Um, there are, it's electronic braking, so yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure that it, it would be making that noise. And you want to be doing no more than 10 miles an hour approaching the buffer stops for the, AW, for the TPWS. And they are located approximately 200 yards, I want to say, 186 metres from the buffer stops. Laser jet overshoots, good evening, how are we doing? Laser jet overshoots, dead rail crashes. So you can see here, here's a good example of how difficult it can be to judge your distance. It looks like I am right on top of that buffer stop. When we go into the outside view, I have got absolutely loads of room. Um, but if we stand up, you can kind of see that I've got loads of room. So when you're driving, you get used to kind of the size of your vehicle and, and how much space you've got in, behind and in front of you as well. Okay, we're on the buffer stop. So full brake application, DRA on and into neutral. This is Troy. No, it's not. This is Troy. It's, it's not good, is it? Um, have we got a train terminating announcement? I don't think we have. Please take extra care when getting on and off trains. Extra care when getting on and off trains. Lock doors. 
Um, and we can put reds up as well. There we go. What's he going to give me medal-wise? Probably not very good. Oh, it's given me a gold. <laughs> Which, considering the, the, the speeding and everything else, it's not too bad. But I, I, I think, honestly, that route has got quite a lot of potential. It's, it's a nice length, and it's, a, it's quite a nice drive, and it's fast, and there's station stops, and all that sort of thing going on. But I, I think that route gets... Um, it gets one of those because of all the issues that's with it, and it's... Mildly frustrating as well. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so we are doing our Scotland special because it is Burns Night tonight. So let's return to the main menu and let's jump into Cathcart and have a couple of little runs on some quality traction, the Class 314. I, I believe they've all gone now, the Class 314s, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, Definitely, definitely a little bit of a shame. Do, 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 do. Right, to the trains. Choose a route. We are going for a ride on the Cathcart Circle. Timetable mode. 314. Oh, it's a 314, not a 318. My bad. Why did I think it was a 318? What? A 318 is the units that GA used to use. Um. Okay, Glasgow Central to Nilston is 34 minutes. Um, there we've got a Glasgow Central to Glasgow Central, which is a 34 minute run. Um, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do that. We'll take that run. Uh, 7.34 in the morning. Again, that's kind of just about sunrise time, I reckon. Uh, let's move it forward to February. It'll sort of almost certainly be sunrise time then. Um, 318's R Scott route. Okay. I've got confused somewhere. 321s and 317s are the GA classes. Okay. I used to know, when I was younger, I used to know the, the classes of everything, and that knowledge is just kind of gone. But never mind, never mind. You said for it. Did I say 314? What? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Drive this commuter service from Glasgow Central to Glasgow Central clockwise. Ah, oh, it's, it's nice. We definitely need some pendos and bits and bobs in, in Glasgow. It does feel the scene just feels um, really quite empty, which is a little bit of a shame. Okay, let's remember how to get the safety systems working in this thing. We got the guards key switch. Um, TPWS AWS isolation switch is on. I think we have to put the guards key in as well, if I remember rightly. Okay, key. Nice. Doors on the left. Um, and we want to set our headlight beam normal uh, and headlight and marker light on. Uh, internal lights are weird. Yeah, lots of weird lighting issues going on there. Lots of weird camera issues going on as well. Uh, okay, so where are we calling at? We are calling at Pollock Shields, Queens Park, Cross Hill, Mount Florida, Cathcart, Langside, Pollock Shore East, Shorelands, Maxwell Park, Pollock Shields West, and Glasgow Central at 0808. Due for departure in about 40 seconds. Wayne train lover, no worries, but thank you very much for joining us. RTI, I'm not looking forward to guarding Hounslow Rounders again. I'm looking forward to the Kingston Rounders, though. Oh, Hounslow Rounders. I quite like driving around the Hounslow line when you haven't got to stop at stations. It's quite nice. Um, the signal just randomly changed and spadded me. You must be playing um, SCR. That's an SCR trick. KO, Trans Pennine Express, Glasgow Central would be great. Do you know what? Trans Pennine Express, 68s with the, the Nova sets, um, would be, in my opinion, a really, really nice addition to Train City World. I, I, I would like that route. That, that would be a good one. Um, Gallant Pioneer, some rough areas you're passing through. I would advise against leaving your cab unless essential. Is that is that kind of, if you stop for more than two minutes, they'll have the wheels off the train. Is it is it kind of one of those areas? 
Um, I've only been to Glasgow once, and I must say it was lovely. I, I went there. I spent a week there for work, and uh, it, it was nice. I, I was... Yeah. Okay, we're in forward. Let's get this thing going. I'm going to turn the game audio up a little bit, because I'm... This train seems con considerably quieter to me, so let me know, guys, if you think it's too loud. If you want it up or down, we can absolutely do that. Not a problem either, either way. We've got a green. We're 15 out and across the bridge. Got a green on... That look like a golf golf signal. Ah, oh, I do like I do like the lighting and the signals coming out of here. That does look nice. Again, credit where credit's due. Um, that that is nice. I've got the signal mod on as well, and they do make those signals absolutely pop. Um, I've got a video on the channel about how to install that signaling mod. Unfortunately, it's PC only, um, but it really really does make those signals pop, as you can see, and you you can see them for miles away. Yeah, really really nice add-on. I've walked across that bridge over there a few times when I was in Glasgow. All lines 15 miles per hour. Wayne Train Lover, does Artie go past Q Bridge? Uh, I go past Q Bridge occasionally. On if I get on the train, it'll be four Yankee one nine, or any of the Who Junction to Eastleigh trippers I occasionally drive. So yeah, I I go through there as well. Right, we've got a green one on the line three. We're good for twenty at the moment. Signals quite close together. Um, Londo Spark, do signals pop like the mod in real life, or are they more dull? Like no, they absolutely do pop in real life. Unless you've got bright sunlight kind of shining directly onto the signal, then sometimes um, the, the signal aspects can be obscured by sunlight. It was more of a problem with the traditional um, the traditional signals, the, the bulbs with coloured lenses, because as the sunlight hits the coloured lenses, you can get situations where, where signals become completely washed out by sunlight, and you can't actually you can't actually see what aspect is being displayed. Um, but the LED ones do seem a little less prone to that. The problem you get with the LED ones is if you stop too close to them, which sometimes in stations you have to, um, sometimes you can't actually see them, do, can't see sort of what's illuminated, which can be quite annoying. A lot of LED signals now, if you look, we might even be able to see it in game. A lot of LED signals now, the kind of top row of LEDs is, is kind of angled down. Um, so you've got kind of your main signal head, and then as you get closer to the signal, yeah, you kind of see that top layer of LEDs there. It's sort of angled slightly differently, so you can see it when you're close up. Right, we're 25. Pollock Shield is our first station. We have got two yellows. Typical Nathan Trains. Yeah, I believe you can. It's it's a third-party download. Um, like I say, there is a video on the channel which will give you the uh, the information on how to go about doing that. And uh, now we've got what's known as a stepped distant signal. So this signal here is a distant signal, which means it's not capable of showing a red aspect. Um, we would obey the least restrictive aspect on approaching this signal. So if, if the signal on the right-hand side was the least restrictive, we'd be taking the route to the right. The signal on the left, the lower one, is the least restrictive, um, which means we are obeying that and going straight on or off to the left. I'm not sure the, the exact signaling. If both signal heads were showing one yellow, that would mean the next signal is at danger. If both signal heads were showing green, that would mean we're stopping and reporting to there because that would be a signaling irregularity. Um, that is a signaling irregularity right there. Okay, that, that definitely should not have happened. That would be a report to the signaler immediately. That is a signaling irregularity. Um, so we've just gone from a green to a red, which is not allowed. That would most definitely be report to the signaller. Um, 
you can see on the side of that signal as well, you've got the little yellow bit. That's that's kind of if you're stopped close to it. Uh, so you would be stopping now, reporting that to the signaler, filling out, filling out an RT3185 signaling irregularity form. Uh, typical Nathan trains, if you just search for signaling mods, I'll see if I can find it and I'll, I'll post a link, um, but it is definitely there. W4, yeah, tea and biscuits for the signaler, definitely, definitely would be tea and biscuits. Um, to be fair, that unless the signaler's put the signal back on approach, um, I, I would say it's more of a fault with the signaling system. But definitely a, a wrong side failure, though. And we are free for the free, and we have got an offside door release. And we are stopped at a red signal, so brake step free, DRA set, and into neutral. Doors on the right hand side. So, what is good practice to do if you've got a door release on the right hand side is to actually get up out the seat and operate the doors on that side of the cab. Uh, let's jump back in the seat and we can jump into the external camera and see what's going on. Okay, so we are now running late. So I'm hoping this is not a bug in the game. Um, oh, okay. We should get we should get the signal once that train's gone. Cheating there. You can see there. Um, that's what I was saying. On the side of the LED signal, you've got these kind of little indicators there, and this is if you're stopped right up close to the signal, uh, you can see what's going on. They're, they are really, really quite useful. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Lock doors. Let's see when we lock doors. Normally locking doors against a red signal isn't something you want to be doing. That has now cleared to one yellow. But I think in game sometimes you've got to lock doors in order to, to trigger the next event to happen on the with the dispatcher system. Right, we've got one yellow. There is something called a soy spad, which is start on yellow spad. Uh, the danger is you don't fully acknowledge the single yellow, so you pull away from the station, take full power, forget that the signal was one yellow, come around the corner, pass the red, and you have unfortunately had a spad. So one yellow, use commentary driving to mitigate the risk, and we're only taking 50% power instead of full power, which is kind of a reminder to ourselves. So now we're red ahead, focusing on the red ahead. Red ahead, red ahead, red ahead. And just keeping the speed down as well. Red signal is a brick wall, and we never run towards a brick wall. That's a, that's a pretty good rule of thumb. Yeah, typical Nathan, that's what I was just saying. Sometimes you have to close the doors um, in order to get the signal to change. But in real life, unless the local procedures uh, mandate otherwise, you don't, you wouldn't close the doors against a red signal. Because the trouble is there, you kind of, you go onto autopilot, and because you've got that sequence of events, typically if you close the doors, your next move is you hear the, the relay click on the door interlock, you take power, you go. So you're kind of almost setting that autopilot sequence into operation. Uh, so that's why we, we wouldn't start that sequence until we've got, got the proceed aspect. Okay, so this is a high risk situation. We are free for the free. I've overshot the stop car mark, but not to worry. Okay, so this is a situation here. Stopped at a station. Previous signal was one yellow. No starting signal provided. Set, set the DRA. I'm going for spacebar there because I've been playing BVE too much. Set the DRA. So this is this is a time where the rule book mandates we must set the DRA. Um, absolutely huge, huge risk uh, at this location because of this. This is a safety announcement. Gate board or roller blade within the station building. It's a nice looking model. Lock doors. Mm. 
So here's your risk. You stopped at the station. Um, during your station stop, you've been observing the, the platform monitors if you're, if you're not DOO. Um, you know, you've been checking your schedule card. Lots and lots of things could have happened while you just stop at the station. You've got your DRA set. That is your reminder that your next signal is, you're expecting your next signal to be at danger. So that is why it's really, really important to set your DRA in that situation, which is your driver reminder appliance. And remembering, of course, next signal is at danger. Really, really easy to forget that that next signal is at red. You accelerate away and have a spaz. It has been that—that that is kind of one of your key risk factors. Uh, and part of being a train driver is kind of understanding those risk factors, being able to recognise those risk factors, and being able to mitigate against them. Because although it sounds quite easy, oh yeah, one yellow red, which which in its simplest forms it absolutely is that easy, one yellow red. Um, when you kind of start looking into kind of why people have spads and the reason people have incidents, when you start doing uh, RCA analysis and stuff like that, there we go, we've got a green so we can get going. When you start doing RCA analysis, root cause analysis, you, you're kind of looking at, you know, why these things happen. Because if you say, oh yeah, one yellow, red, it's easy, isn't it? You go past the yellow, you put the brakes on, you stop at the red. But then there's obviously all these other things that can cause people to fall into traps. So when I'm, as a mentor driver, when I've got a trainee with me and I'm mentoring them, as well as actually teaching them to drive the train, you're also kind of making them aware of these potential traps that they can, they can fall into. And you're kind of trying to get them in that sort of safety mindset. And we're coming into Cross Hill. Last signal was green. Hey, Joshy Journeys, good evening. How are we doing? Typical day from trains ask a good question. When setting up the GSMR and there's no starting signal, what would you do to find the signal number? So typically, if it's a location where you would normally set up the GSMR um, and there's no starting signal, you'll have what's known as an alias plate. Um, which is a little blue plate with a number on it, and that's what you would set the GSMR up by. Um, alternatively, you would use the wild cards, which, depending on your company driving policy, is uh, free set numbers that you can use to set the train up. Um, some companies don't like you using them; they're kind of a last resort thing. The other option would be you can you can enter service as long as GSMR GB is displayed on the radio. Um, so the other option would be proceed to the next signal, stop the train fully set the radio up and then proceed from there. Um, but if you know the next signal number, you, you could certainly put it in. As long as you are within that signal berth, it, it will register you on the network. Um, Sussex Rail Enthusiast, good evening, how are we doing? Uh, Artie, yeah, when you're actually driving a train, there's a lot more to it than one yellow red. Your brain is having to focus on a lot going on and deal with all the responsibilities to it all. And, and the thing is, you know, you can be driving along for hours and hours on green signals without a care in the world. Um, as I'm sure you know, Artie, as you've seen firsthand, and, and everything's absolutely brilliant. And then you've got to be able to switch back on. You, you can you can be in a state where you're thinking about, you know, where am I going on my holidays? What am I doing for Christmas? You know, you know, I'm going out after work. I'm going to have a barbecue. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to build my model railway. And you know, everything in the world's great. And you're kind of just just in your own little world. But you've got to be able to switch on at a moment's notice. You know, you you're happily running along on greens, and then the circumstances can change in a split second. You've got to be able to bring yourself back into the cab. Um, it, it's, it's perfectly natural. Everyone drives on autopilot. You do it when you drive your car. Um, it's called unconscious competence. Um, and it's a, it's a perfectly normal stage of driving, but what it's important to be able to do is to recognize when you need to pull yourself back into a state of conscious competence um, and be able to start processing information. And that, that's kind of one of the key skills. And sometimes, sometimes people just miss the triggers, you know. You've got AWS that goes off in the cab, you go past a yellow signal, AWS fires off, you acknowledge it. But after a while, a AWS, anyone that's, that's driven a train for any length of time will tell you, AWS becomes habitual. AWS goes off, you press the button. You don't even think about why you're doing it, you just press the button, it becomes habitual. So that's why we do something called push and recall and commentary driving. So if you do acknowledge an AWS, you press your AWS button and you're saying out loud the reason why you pressed it. You need, you need to understand why you've had to press that button so it doesn't just become an automatic reaction. Um, so yeah, there, there, is, there is a lot more to it than meets the eye. And all these kind of skills, what I'm saying about sort of concentration and commentary driving and push and recall, these all come, come under what are known as non-technical skills. Uh, which essentially is your ability to maintain concentration, your ability to judge situational awareness, um, your ability to kind of to, to manage those those sort of human skills. Um, yeah. And 
we are free for the free, which is on the end of the platform there. We've got a green and a position four route indicator here at Mount Florida. Point and call in Japan. Yeah, Japan do use point and call system. Uh, we use press and call on the AWS. Um, point and call, I, I, I do use point and call. There are, there are a couple of locations on my route that are high risk for me. There's a couple of places where I've had... I wouldn't say I've had near misses, but there's a couple of places where I've recognised the potential. And part of being a professional driver is to recognise the potential and then work out what you can do to mitigate against the risk. So there are a couple of locations where I do, I will go to my eye and I will point at the signal and I will call out the aspect. Because I know to me that is a particularly high risk situation. Um, so by, by doing the action and calling it, you know, you're, you're physically doing something which shows you've acknowledged it. You're saying it out loud so you get that feedback, Luke. It, Luke, it is really, really beneficial. Right, we've got a green. We've got a position four route indicator. Next station stop is Cathcart itself. Um, good for 35 going up to 40. I think it's the fastest we've had this train the whole stream. Ben Davis. Let's get it down to 35 and I will answer you. We've got one yellow there. Um, did you hear Train Seymour 4 news? West Somerset Railway remastered update to arrive next week. We'll be doing a stream video on it. Uh, absolutely will be. Uh, no AWS on that signal. We are one yellow red ahead. Absolutely will be doing a stream on that at some point next week. I am away on a training course for the first part of next week. So um, it depends on what day I manage to get hold of it next week. But yeah, I, I would definitely, definitely like to do a stream on that. Uh, right, we've got a 20 coming up and we are also red ahead. Tom, before becoming a train driver, is it, is it something where you should train your concentration? So part when you apply to become a train driver or any job on the railway, red ahead, 20 at the magnet, free for the free platform on the right. Uh, when you train to become a train driver, uh, you apply to become a train driver, you're going to be invited to sit a psychometric test. And part of that psychometric testing is to kind of gauge your ability to maintain concentration for long periods, uh, maintain focus. Um, to, to assess your ability to, to assess your situational awareness and that, that's kind of what the psychometric testing is there to do. Playing train sim in a way, if you play it properly, i.e. You, you sit down for two or three hours and you play a route and you don't move for two or three hours and you actually focus in and home in on it, is a pretty good way to master those concentration yeah. skills. Um, right, so we are stopped at a red, so DRA step free and into neutral and we are doors on the right hand side. Signal has cleared with a Charlie indication in the theatre box, so we'll remove our DRA. NG, good evening, how are we doing? Right, I feel like I have rabbited on for ages. Hopefully the information has been of, of some use or some interest to you anyway. Uh, let's press that button. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Let's have another round of this. Hey, Ian! Not seen you in for a while, bud. Yeah, I've, I've been good. How are you? To be fair, this is probably the second or third stream of the year. I, d I did have a few weeks we're not doing anything. So, but yeah, good good to see you. Uh, lock doors, okay. Objective complete. Langside is our next station stop. Right, we are off. Brakes off. Uh, into forward and a couple of notches of throttle. 20 mile an hour across the junction. Okay, locomotive location, livery, pig and bob, you are third on my screen with number 18. Let's play locomotive livery location. Okay guys, you might get a train this time. I'm going to give you box number 18. 10 seconds if you can, please, that locomotive livery and location. Oh, hey! <laughs> And if we can identify the train, that, that's, that's, that's got to go some way to helping us with that location. What are you reckoning? What are you reckoning? Oh, NG, I, I admire you. I wish I could run 10 kilometres. Um, saying that, like, a couple of years ago, I could. I, I did get in quite good shape, didn't I? Didn't I? I did. And I've 
let myself go too much. We are going to start doing park run though when the weather gets better, aren't we? Yes, you are. Yes, we are. Park walk for us. What are we going? What are we going? What are we going? Anakin says 720. Rowan, GA 720. Looks like a 720. Uh, Hannah Scott, I'm guessing GA livery. GA 720 Stratford. Hey, Mr. Gamer, welcome to Dabra. Only subscriber. Great to have you here. Um, Artie, it's Harwich International, isn't it? Harwich? I, I couldn't possibly comment. Right, we're good for 40. We have got Langside Station just coming up. Which is just going to be coming out of the fog. There we go. Getting a little bit of break in. Greater Anglia, 720 Southern Central. What's that? South End Central. Um, KO, class 800 at Newark Northgate. Artie, why is it every time I... I say it isn't a place that I sign. It always is. <laughs> um, is it a place you sign? Got me thinking now. I I I did have a drive um, up the GA to Felixstowe a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, I went for a took a container train up there. That was. It's a nice bit of railway. <laughs> it's it's a it's a lovely bit of railway. What are we thinking, guys? What are we thinking? Uh, we are loading passengers, so let's jump over into the Discord server as well and see what you lovely people have been posting over there. Uh, absolutely nothing, <laughs> unless <laughs> unless it's not scrolling for me. Let's have a little look and see if, it, if it's, it's... Sometimes it's a me problem. Uh, no, no one's posting anything in the Discord server. We're not feeling the love. Feel the love in the Discord server. If you want to post any pictures over there, we're in the live stream pictures page, and you will find an invitation link in the description below. The weather is getting worse. Let's lock our doors and get moving. Objective complete. Let's go. We're off to Pollockshaw East Platform number one. I believe we are coming to the end of the stream now as well, so we do have to get this locomotive delivery location wound up. And we do have 102 of you lovely people watching, so if you haven't already, guys, please, please do hit that like button. Um, consider subscribing. Really does help me out here on the channel. And we are off right. Not too far, but we can get it up to 40. I reckon we can get up to 40 and still stop. He says, with, with lots of confidence. <laughs> it's just going to come out the fog at us. Yeah, the, 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 the brakes on this thing are not too bad. And we are free for the free platform on the right hand side. Cab Bep, I bet it starts snowing before we get to Glasgow Central. <laughs> yeah, the, the dynamic weather does seem to favour snow. Um, S6 and free car marker there. I want to try not to stop on that AWS magnet. That could be bad news. So if you stop the train over top of an AWS ramp or AWS magnet, which is that yellow piece of infrastructure you can see just at the bottom of the screen there um, what can happen is you can't even if the signal's green you can't cancel the AWS system which will trigger an emergency brake application which means you can't move the train so your two options are to isolate the AWS system move the train forward then reinstate the AWS system or you can change ends go down to the back cab um, move the train from the back cab which obviously isn't over the AWS you can move it off the AWS magnet and then um, change ends again and carry on your merry way either either way you are going to have to get permission from the signaler and either either way the manager's probably going to want to I mean it's not an operational incident but you're going to have delayed the train because you stopped in the wrong place so they're not you know you're not going to get in trouble for it but if you do it too many times the manager's certainly not going to be pleased with you right we are 40 miles an hour we are off to Shorelands we've got a green light let's go 
beautiful stop. Thank you very much, KO. Appreciate that. Um, Wayne Train Lover, I've put something in the Discord. Go on then, let's have a little look. What have you, what have you put over there, Wayne? Let's. Uh... Oh, look at that. We've got, we've got Eurostars. We've got three seven threes and E three twenties. I want to say, and Joshua R underside of Tower Bridge. Something I've really want to do is the Tower Bridge experience, and I must get round to it at some point. We haven't overshot a station yet. We, we've come close. I thought we were gonna. I thought we were gonna do our first one there, but we're all right. I, I don't play this route often enough, really, Kafka. It is is genuinely a, a very nice route. It's got nice traction as well. The the three one four is a nice unit to drive. <laughs> It is, it is a lovely, lovely unit to drive there. We are running four minutes late, which is very realistic for a ScotRail service. Um, all views and opinions are my own, of course. <laughs> uh, Ian Bradley, when you first buy Trainsim World 4 for the first time on a Windows 11 OS laptop, what do you get to start off with? Do you mean in terms of uh, routes, Ian? Um, I'm not entirely sure if you mean in terms of routes and traction. There are... Um, there are kind of different packages available, so kind of just look through the Steam Store, the Epic Games Store, and see see what's on offer. Right, we are off to Maxwell Park. Speed limit is still forty. Let's get it going. Trains at the station. Hello and welcome. How are we doing? What should we do? What should we do? Yeah, let's have locomotive location. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Let's see if we can get this one get this one worked out. And don't forget, guys, if you do want to send me any pictures for locomotive location livery, it would be absolutely brilliant uh, if you did. And you can submit those via the website. And RT, I know you're going to tell me off because I haven't updated that yet. Oh, I'm being far too conservative with these brakes at the moment. I, I need to be driving like I stole it. That's better. Yeah, I'm still not still not driving aggressively enough. Unlocking doors on the right. We are stopped in the right place. Locomotive location livery. Um, Cabep, this route is challenging when snowing. I, I can imagine with it's got some quite nasty gradients in it. Um, XX Love Roblox 2023. You're the third number on my screen, my friend. With number 21. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Box number 21, guys. 10 seconds for that Locomotive Livery Location, if you can. What are you thinking? GA would be a, a nice route to have in game. Um, London to Ipswich, or, or something like that would be good, give you lots and lots of freight opportunities as well, you can have class 90s, um, freight liner, 66s, uh, I mean flirts, 720s, that, that, that would be a nice, nice route to have in game. Right, we're good for 40, we have got one yellow. I am going to cheat and use my um, heads up display here and I note that the signal is at the end of the next station. So I'm not going to panic too much. Which is a little bit weird because there's a, another signal there. 
which isn't showing on the HUD. Uh, I should imagine this is a distance signal because I don't think the HUD shows distance. Yeah, this is a distance signal. We know it's a distance because the triangle on the signal plate. So we are red ahead. Not much distance to that red. That is a little bit tight. Serious breaks in there so we get down to 20 at the AWS magnet. Yeah, we, we did do um, Ipswich down to London Hannah on Train Sim Classic a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, that was a really, really nice run. And we're coming in a little bit more cautiously here than we have been because we are coming towards a red signal. If you've got a red signal on the station, you're stopping for the signal rather than the platform. So you're, you're always coming in a little bit more cautious. Okay, I don't need to set my DRA because that signal has just stepped up to one yellow. Um, train spot from Berkshire says, Greater Anglia 720 Tottenham Hail. Chaosis Class 800 Azuma Newark Northgate. Um, Emily Jane the Costume Queen, what are you doing here? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Same person. Um, Wayne at Train Lover, Class 720 at Stratford. What are you reckoning? Let's do, let's do another one. Post your numbers now for Locomotive Livery Location. Locomotive Livery Location. Tell me what you are thinking. Objective complete. We're off to Glasgow Central Platform 5 in 1.7 miles, where this train and stream will terminate. We are departing on one yellow. We have a soy spad risk, which is a start on yellow spad risk. So we're expecting our next signal to be red. So, getting a bit excited. Power notch 2. Focusing on that red ahead. Red ahead, red ahead. And we're just going to creep around the corner here. We are approaching a red. Red signals a brick wall. Don't run towards a brick wall. I like the graffiti on the left-hand side. Uh, okay, the fog was doing weird things there. <laughs> Disappeared and then came back. And that is a shunt signal or ground position light signal on the right-hand side. That's not applying to us. We are looking for a red ahead. Um, train spot from Berkshire. We are going to be going with you number 15. We're just going to get past this next signal. There is potential for a read across risk here. Um, so we need to make sure we're looking at the right signal. That is definitely our signal there, which is green. Um, 30 dropping down to 25. We'll get it up to 30. I'll run quite a steep downhill gradient. Let's, let's get it up to 25. Okay. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Tracer from Berkshire, number 15. Go on then. There's another train. Let me know your thoughts as always, guys. Right, we've got two yellows just stepped up to a green. 25, which we are currently doing. Tom Abbott. Thank you very much, bud. Really appreciate it. I just speedily readied the submit and LLL link to the website after I somehow forgot to add it during my last update. No worries, thank you very much. Um, Josh Journey, the live stream channel doesn't seem to show up for me on the Discord. Uh, not sure what's going on there, it certainly should. And we're going to drop down to 20 in a minute. We'll give it a little bit of power, try and keep it at 25 because we are running quite late. Um, so if you're running late, we're safe to do so. You want to be driving as close to the speed limit as you can. So sort of in, no, in normal circumstances, if the speed limit was 25, sort of 20, 25, anywhere around that is pretty good. Um, if you're running late, you want to try and keep as tight to your speed limits as you can. That's the only way you can make up time, really. Um, you, don't, you don't do it if it's not safe to do it. You'd only do it if it's safe to do it. Um, we're running on green signals, so that there's no reason why we shouldn't be sticking to the speed limits. Transfer from Berkshire is going Greater Anglia Class 720 Tottenham Hall. Um, RT, if it really is Harwich International, I'm going to scream. KO's going Class 800 Azuma at Peterborough. Mixed opinions, guys. Mixed opinions. Uh, 
And there's our 20. Uh, Anakin, by the way, train drivers in Tokyo are quite aggressive. They always straight in full power into parting and enter the platform high speed when stopping. Tom, are drivers penalised for lateness? They were just driving slowly. Uh, uh, so, it's one of those things, Tom. You're, you're never really going to get disciplined for driving safely. However, if your manager was to come out for a ride with you and the signals were all green and you were doing 20 mile an hour under the speed limit, they're going to start asking questions as to why that is and questioning your competencies and, and whether you're you know, suitable to do the job. If, if you say, oh, it's a competence issue. So... It's a yes and no. Generally speaking, if, if you're running on cautionary aspects and you're driving slow, or because the, the weather conditions are poor, or because you think you've got a problem with the train, or you know, if, there, if there's a valid reason why you're why you're driving slow and why you've lost time, that's absolutely perfectly acceptable. But if you're losing 20 minutes every time you go and drive a train, and you had green signals all the way, then certainly they are going to be asking questions about that. Okay, last signal was one yellow next signal will be red which is the buffer stops so coming into a terminal platform the most the, the most or the least restrictive signal you can possibly have is one yellow you should never ever come towards buffer stops on a green um, because the buffer stops are effectively a red signal so the company i used to work for previously that used to drive blue trains between hastings and charing cross amongst other destinations our company driving policy was 15 miles an hour oh glasgow queen street just come to life uh, Glasgow Central, sorry. Our company driving policy was 15 miles an hour at the platform ramps and then nearer 5 than 10 for the TPWS loops, which I believe are those bits of equipment just there. And we are under 10. Incidentally, if you activate the TPWS grids going towards buffer stops, that is the one time you are allowed to, to move the train before contacting the signaller. Um, if you were to activate them, you're, you are permitted to reset the TPWS, move towards the buffer stops, and then contact the signal. That's the only time you are allowed to reset and move on your own authority. Oh, I'm going far too slow. This train's probably due out again in two minutes, and the driver's got to grab a coffee first, so... It never happens in real life. And again, trying to judge that kind of six foot. Yeah, I'll take that. We want to be stopping about six foot away from the buffer stops. Doors on the left. Uh, we are setting our DRA because the buffer stop is a red signal. And we are leaving the cab. You should always set the DRA when entering or leaving a cab. Uh, you should never have to set it when entering because the person who left the cab should have set it. But uh, entering and leaving is both in the rule book. Okay. Loading passengers. It is loading, 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 loading. Whilst it is doing that, let's press this button here. Let's play locomotive livery location. Right. Locomotive livery location. Thank you very, very much, W4LT, for sending in. RT, the good news is it's, it's not Harwich International. That is the good news. There was one person in the chat tonight that got it right. Uh, that person is... Train spotter from Berkshire. That is indeed. Let's press the button. It's time to reveal today's locomotive livery location. That is indeed a GA plus 720, or two of them in actual fact, at Tottenham Hale Station. Thank you very, very, very much, W4LT, for sending that one in. Um, yeah, that's that's the second week in a row, or second stream in a row. We've had we've had quite a challenging one, so. Uh, yeah, really, really quite pleased with that. Absolutely fantastic. What is it saying in game? What is it saying in game? Uh, W4, I'm disappointed that the third train didn't make it into the picture. Yeah, the, tr the trouble is, W4, if, if I don't crop the pictures down a little bit, then because of the size of the blocks, you can reveal one block and kind of instantly know what it is. So that's why I always crop them down a little bit. Um, but you can put the you can put the um, the full picture up in Discord if you want to, so people can see the full picture. Okay, we got a gold medal. We'll absolutely take that. That was not bad. That was not bad. Let's press that button there. Return to free roam. Right, we are going to close that down. That is it. Let's press. Uh, let's find the buttons. Let's press that button there, guys. Say hello, Mum Rao, behind me. Hi. Are you buying model railways on eBay? No. You should be... 
You should be buying me model railway stuff on eBay, please. My birthday soon. Or on an Acura Scale Class 66. Yeah, I'll be lucky. <laughs> anyway, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. We still have 134 of you lovely people watching, so if you haven't already, guys, please do hit the like button and consider subscribing. It really does help me and the channel out. It is great to see um, so many of you here supporting me and hopefully enjoying the streams and in enjoying the content as well. Big thank you to everyone who's been moderating tonight. We've had Artie in um, Northern Princess Productions, Emily Jane, Costume Queen as well, um, that I've seen in anyone else who's been in moderating. Big thank you to all the first class members you can check out the membership options by clicking on the little button if you want to send any pictures to me for locomotive location delivery the website is on the screen for you right now if you head over there you'll find a link and a very fancy form created by RT2 um, to send those over that would be absolutely fantastic you can also follow me on my social media channels which are on the screen for you right now next stream on this channel will most likely be Sunday night but uh, I'm not 100% sure on that one yet. We'll, we'll see how it goes because I've got a couple of days away um, on a training course next week. So that'll be my last night before I go away and my, my wife not be, might not be too happy if I spend it streaming rather than... I'll buy you a takeaway afterwards. Is that all right? <laughs> not enough. Not enough, she says. But there we go. Yeah, no, really do appreciate you coming in, guys. Um... All the usual stuff, social media channels on the screen for you right now. If you want to join our very friendly and inclusive Discord server, it'd be absolutely great to have you over there. And you will find an invitation link for that in the description below. I'm going to press that button there. That is going to start the music. I am going to thank you very, very much for watching, which I've said about four times, but I really do, do genuinely appreciate it. Thank you to the moderators. Thank you to the first class members. And see you in the next stream. Good night for now and happy birthday. And happy birth night, of course. If you are still watching the stream at this point, if you watch a Marvel film, they, they do kind of things in the end credits where you, everyone sits in the cinema until the credits are finished rolling um, to kind of, you know, get get a sneak peek at the next film. It's become a thing with Marvel films. Well, we're doing this on Dad right now, so if you are still here, it, it's great that you're still here. You are totally too voted if you are a Radio 2 listener to get a um, I've just noticed my T-shirt's inside out. So go back in the stream. See, it's only people, it's only people that are here at the very end that's going to notice it. Um, go back, have a look, my, 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 my 